Okay, so for more on this, joining me live is Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's foreign policy advisor, Ophir Falk. Ophir, thank you for joining the show on this Saturday. Um, I want to ask you at the top here about this announcement from the president to have U.S. troops build this pier. Uh, to, in, into Gaza to get humanitarian aid into those civilians. What are your initial thoughts, concerns about this? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, the temporary pier that will be uh, set there is uh, completely coordinated with Israel, and uh, we welcome the opportunity uh, to enable uh, additional humanitarian aid to get into the, to the humans. Uh, to the civilians, and uh, we got to make sure that that uh, civilian humanitarian aid uh, reaches the actual civilians and not uh, and not Hamas. The coordination. Yeah. I know the two countries, you know, have been trying to figure a way forward and trying to get a hostage deal done uh, with Hamas. Um, but the president was caught on a hot mic at the State of the Union. I'm sure you've heard about this and seen this, where he's caught saying that. He wants to have a come to Jesus meeting with the prime minister. And I think we have the sound here. Let's play it. We've got to keep pushing on the humanitarian stuff and all this stuff. So I told him, baby, I'm going to get this. I said, baby, you want to come to Jesus. Sir, just. Okay, so you hear some other senators laugh about it. Um, does the president need to have a come to Jesus meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu? Well, the president and Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu have spoken uh, dozens of times since the beginning of the war, and uh, you'd have to ask him what he meant by uh, that statement. Uh, it's not clear to me. Do you take offense to it? Again, I, I, uh, Israel appreciates the, the support that the president has provided to Israel, uh, the bipartisan support, and, and, and primarily the, the great support of the American people. American people uh, strongly support Israel, and we thank the American people for that. We share the same values, and uh, they know that we have to destroy Hamas. The American people know that we have to destroy Hamas. We have to free our hostages, and we m must make sure that uh, Gaza doesn't uh, pose a threat to Israel uh, ever again. Uh, that's what we're doing. Those are our war goals, and we will reach those goals. That's total victory, and we will reach total victory. It's, uh, it's in within reach. Well, We've me... already taken out. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to, uh, to cut you off. I guess let me let me put it this way. Are you confident that President Biden is confident in the current prime minister? Because, of course, a huge headline a few days ago was that your defense minister was here at the White House. So what, what's going on here? Well, actually, our defense minister was here in Israel. There was a uh, another minister that paid a private visit to Washington. Uh, but we are in complete uh, coordination with the U.S. We are on the full page, uh, for, on, on the same page in terms of the need to destroy Hamas. It's a genocidal terrorist organization that invaded Israel on the 7th of October, murdered 1,200 Israelis, took 250 people uh, hostage, and we are right now taking uh, waging war on Hamas, not the Palestinian people, but on Hamas. Uh, we are going to destroy Hamas. We've already taken out 19 out of their 24. Uh, Brigades. We're going to take out the final four in Rafah. We're going to free our hostages, and we're going to make sure that Gaza doesn't serve, it, doesn't pose as a threat to us. That's that's also the. I'm sure that's the American uh, interest as well. And uh, we thank the American people for their very strong support in Israel. In a recent poll, over uh, over 80 percent of the American people uh, expressed very strong support uh, for Israel in this war against uh, Hamas, which is a genocidal terrorist organization. And uh, the world will be much better off once we. Uh, once we destroy Hamas. Sir, there's, um, we have live pictures right now from Israel uh, showing protests happening in Tel Aviv. These are families of the hostages, supporters, calling on those hostages to be released, calling on the government uh, to do more. These families have gone now five long, painful months without their loved ones. Um, this deal, it feels like it just keeps on getting stalled and stalled. What can you tell us about the latest on this hostage uh, deal? Well, clearly, I can't get into details of negotiations. What I can tell you is, as uh, the president has said, uh, they're way over the top. The, the Hamas, uh, their, their demands are delusional. And uh, once they come down to earth, we'll be able to do a deal like we did in, uh, in November. Uh, we've already gotten 112 hostages out. 
Uh, the main reason for getting these hostages out is uh, military pressure, which the IDF is, is carrying out as we're doing right now, as we're talking right now. The IDF has taken the war to Hamas and, uh, and firm negotiations. We at any rate are willing to do a deal just like we did in November. We want to get our hostages out. There's 134 uh, hostages out, including 18 women. And I think it's important on International uh, Women's Day to, to reiterate, there are 18 Israeli women being held by these savages, by these Hamas savages. And anybody who has true uh, humanitarian issues at heart should demand the immediate and unconditional release of, of, of the hostages. Just very quickly here, sir, just we have five seconds left. Do you have any sort of a timeline or a hope as to when we might get a deal? The second that uh, Hamas's demands are, uh, are not delusional anymore, we'll have a deal. In the meantime, we were destroying Hamas. Okay, Ophir Falk, thank you very much for joining the show.